Hello and welcome back. We've just opened points 11 and that'll let us bring out this great group of models from the station there. It's the uh, Hornby Railways Mallard from the late 70s with some rather bright looking coaches which were also in the catalogue at the time. We'll uh, close points 11 there and off around the layout. There's a little bit of a growl from the motor but I think that's largely due to the uh, sort of echoed effect of the tender body and I think those coaches are possibly a little bit on the bright side, aren't they? Smoothly down the side of the station here. Then we'll bring the whole group to a, a gentle stop. And there she is on the uh, front cover of the 1979 catalogue, edition 25. I think they've gone for the sort of uh, old fashioned photograph album look about this catalogue. It, it's quite a nice theme and it runs right the way through the, through the catalogue. We'll have a look here on page 24. There's a lovely large photograph, very, very beautifully lit. If you look at the model though, it does rather show up some uh, quite crude, crude paintwork, or perhaps this is just a, a factory sample or an early production model when they didn't quite have the mold right. And the, uh, the numbering on the front here certainly looks as though that may well have been done by hand. We have another picture over here on page 25, side view. Stunning looking valve gear sitting there, isn't it? And uh, there's the information about the model. New model for uh, 79 R350 BR Class A4, 462 locomotive named Mallard. She didn't keep R350 for very long, the, the model number, sorry. Um, as Hornby were doing at the time, they were turning over to um, paint finish models and she gained, gained the number of R309 in uh, 1980, although I believe this uh, un unpainted version may have persisted in, in sets up until 1981 from what I've read. We'll just have a, a look here. It says the holder of the world speed record for steam at 126 miles per hour. This splendid loco is now preserved in the National Railway Museum at York. I must uh, go and have a look at that one day. So if we pop this uh, catalogue down for a moment, I'm just going to have a look at um, Another variant of the A4 that came along later, 1981. We've got this uh, splendid blue model, and uh, she's uh, R372. There were many variations of this model. If you notice, this model has the valances. There were, there were variations on this throughout the years, and the liveries are there are far too many to list. Um, I believe the mold, when they made the mold, uh, was made in such a way that they could make uh, both the valanced variation and the, uh, the one with the valance moved uh, for later in its service life, I think for ease of uh, servicing of the locomotive. I think personally, it looks rather more impressive without the valance. It has a, a certainly quite aggressive stance when you look at it side on coming towards camera. Really, really beautiful thing. So we'll pop that down and we'll put this uh, 1981 catalog to one side. So terrific cover on there, ticket to ride. So here we have the model in its box. So we'll just have a, a swift look over the box. So it came to me this way. It's had a number of price tickets on it in the past, all sadly removed before I acquired it. There we go. R350, A4, Loco, Mallard. So that's a, a paper label stuck on. It, potentially these boxes could have been printed with a number on, but I suspect that the boxes could have been used for many different models and the, the sticky labels were we just put on no labeling on the other end so a fairly worn box and smoothly away from the station now and straight into the uh, second radius curve there we're going to make our way around the layout to uh, points number seven where we can move through onto the outside line and gather a little bit more pace i think around the first radius curve straight into points number seven there very well behaved through there we'll wait for the last coach and try and Snap the point shut again into the third radius curve, gathering plenty of pace now and straight up the incline. I think there's a little wheel slip going on there. These are the original traction tyres on the model. I have no idea how long they've been fitted to. They could be just a little bit harder without the grip that they could have. So I think a change would be in order. So I've just removed the, uh, the uh, internal packaging from the, uh, the red cardboard sleeve. And uh, they are quite fragile, these, as, we, as we've seen in the past. I think uh, the cardboard used was quite uh, 
quite lightweight in the, in the late 70s and they, they do tend to damage quite easily. But what I did notice was this number here, RO66. And just coming back to that labeling there, thinking that maybe it did have a number printed on it initially. Um, RO66 was the uh, coronation class Duchess of uh, Sutherland. So if we just pop this down, have a swift look at the, the catalog here. There we go, we've got uh, RO66 LMS coronation class. Duchess of Sutherland there. So I wonder whether the boxes were originally printed up for those and then being the same similar size locomotive, they just put a sticky label over the original printed boxes. Quite a quite a neat idea. Still, we'll just pop that down. And we'll just have a look at the uh, the polystyrene packaging here. It's in two halves rather than drop in from the top. We'll carefully show it around the other side there. So we've got this lovely uh, illustration printed on the cardboard insert so there's some information about the uh, the locomotive there definitely an, an artist's impression so it's always quite nice to have and there's the uh, the model number down here and i'm not sure what these secondary numbers are after the model number whether that relates to the piece of card or the or the the type of packaging so we'll just pop that that down there we have a, a instruction sheet or service sheet We'll just open that up and it carries a date and the model number there, R350-011179. So that's, that's quite nice to have. And again, we've seen these, quite a number of these over the last handful of videos or so. And it's a fairly general sheet, covers a wide variety of models. And it's always nice to have the, the piece of paper which originally came with a model. We'll just pop that to one side. And then we can see the, the top part of the polystyrene lifts away and it, it does leave a view through there, possibly to preserve the valve gear in, in its uh, transit. So we'll just lift that off and have a swift look inside there. You can see some uh, marking from oil on the wheels there and we've got uh, R350 in the packaging there and a, and a number again. I wonder whether that's the, uh, it's actually, it's not the same number as uh, the number on the end there, half 350, and that's got uh, 9300. And here we've got half uh, 350, let's get that out of uh, shadow, 9210. So I wonder whether each separate part of packaging actually carried, uh, carried a different number. So we'll just pop that out of view, the white polystyrene. We'll just lift up the model. And the cardboard, not the cardboard, the polystyrene tray, and just have a swift look over. You can see she's in, in fairly tidy condition. It's done some running. I don't think it's uh, had a very hard life. And uh, when I got it, it did run. It's a little bit noisy, but uh, we've coaxed her back to life. And I have ordered some uh, uh, fresh traction tires for it, but uh, since I've had it, I haven't replaced them. I had hoped to get them by the time I started making this video, but they uh, sadly haven't shown up yet. So if we just pop this down and we'll uh, just lift out the, the two parts of the model, have a swift look over them and see what number we've got on the, the tray below. So uh, there is the tender. I believe the tender did carry a separate catalog number of R351, although I don't think they were ever sold separately. But we'll have a, a closer look at these items in a moment. We'll just pop that down. We'll swiftly lift out the, uh, the locomotive. Again, beautiful thing, relatively heavy even though the motor is in the uh, in the tender. Some very, very bright uh, cab detail there, isn't there? Let's just pop that down. And again, we'll look at the uh, low, lower half of the tray here. And we've got some marking from the wheels over the years. And again, we've got uh, the uh, number here, R350, and we've got 92102. I didn't notice a secondary number on there. Actually, that's... 92102 as well. So maybe that is, is the part number for the uh, the uh, polystyrene packaging. Quite an interesting uh, uh, um, aspect to the whole range, really, the way they were packaged. It's definitely uh, going to fit this model, isn't it? Or perhaps the, uh, the later models using the same molding. Now, I'm afraid we're not losing much pace now with gathering speed, in fact storming past the HST and they're passing a loop there. 
an absolutely wonderful sound coming from all of those wheels on the steel track. A lovely shot here. Just listen to the sound. It's amazing they stay on the track coming over the diamond crossings there, isn't it? Rapidly up the incline again. And off into the distance, making their way towards the suspension bridge. There's a, a tremendous urge here just to keep driving this model or group of models very rapidly. And I am backing off reluctantly here as she comes down the elevated section. And just look at that uh, running line down the side of the model coming towards you like that. It is quite aggressive, isn't it? I think that really is quite pretty. The, uh, the other variants that had the, the full valances, I think, also are very beautiful models. Well, that really that really does something for me that i think that is quite quite a nice thing this model does have a, a, a commemorative plaque fitted to celebrate its um its uh, world world breaking speed record third of um, july 1938 i believe the plaque plaque was fitted to the real locomotive in 1948 so we've got lots of rivet detail there we've got uh, these lovely plated wheels and it's a nice and smooth running. Although the plating isn't isn't quite as smooth as it could be. Some of it is sort of a little bit bubbly. It's uh, it's not finished off quite as nicely as it could be. I don't think. And again, being tender drive, we're going to be getting pickup from the main part of the model transferred through the um, the drawbar there. So it's very important to keep that clean and prevent any damage. So the uh, the numbering is quite quite thick and heavy here as well, isn't it? handrails picked out in silver of course you've got this wire handrail running down each side of the model let me just see if we can turn that around without handling it too much so it is a it's a pretty thing i'm not sure whether it really benefits from having that coupling on the front i think it would be a, a nicer looking thing without it perhaps lovely chimney detail there again those orange bands they really are not applied quite as carefully as they could be, I don't think, although these things are mass produced, aren't they? And again, that uh, very shiny looking cab detail in there, glazed windows, always nice to have. I wonder how shiny the uh, the, the controls in, in the uh, real locomotive stayed under, under daily use, I wonder whether they were as shiny as that. And there's quite a crude arrangement here. Um, to hold the wheels in place they, they just drop into an open bearing and this this plastic plate here with, with a lot of detail braking detail and so on molded into it is just held in place with a, a screw there and i think these the screws that hold the, the bogey in the truck in place hold it in there as well you've got uh, hornby's name and made in great britain there so you can get access to the the axles quite readily under under there although that that screw is is quite crude it's just a very short self-tapping screw. Let's have a closer look under there. I'm not going to uh, take the bodywork off this. The uh, the clip that holds it in is either side of this cylinder block here. And it is quite fragile, so I don't feel the need to open it up at the moment. I haven't needed access in there, as you can get to all of the bearings directly from this plate. So the nice see-through wheels as well. Just move along the side of the model. It's that lovely shape there. Remember in the photograph, it looked very granular. I was thinking that maybe it was a, a pre-production model there or it hadn't quite been finished off. It was just for trying to sell to the dealers perhaps or proving model, working on different aspects of it in the factory. So lovely thing. And again, I think it is one of those models which uh, Karen can encourage some of us perhaps to uh, use too much power and run it far too quickly around the layout. But then it's possibly all about speed with a model like this, isn't it? So we'll just put that down, certainly when we were younger. So there's the tender. It's quite flat, plain sides on it. Lining's quite nice. There is some marking on it. It has been fairly well handled in the past. Lovely underframe detail there. Lots of it, in fact, isn't there? And it does have the corridor tender. I believe some models had it and some models didn't throughout its life. Um, the real locomotive, some some model, some uh, variants had it, depending on the, the duties they were intended for. So you could uh, walk down there 
and through that door there. Must have been a, quite a frightening experience, I imagine. Running at speed. Huge coal load, isn't it? Great big lumps of coal there. It's uh, quite a pretty thing. The old Hornby 001 was a very crude coal load as well. So uh, theirs was a, a die-cast model, of course. And there's the pin that goes into the drawbar. So we can get uh, power pickup from the, uh, the, the locomotive part of the body there. So fairly plain looking thing, I think. It's not quite as much detail gone into this tender. Perhaps as went into the uh, the main part of the, uh, the locomotive. And I think these are plastic buffer heads here. We'll just have a swift look underneath. So we've got two traction tyres. As I said, I've ordered some more. These ones are a little bit hard and shiny. I have cleaned them, but I'm, I think I'm getting a little bit more wheel slip than I should. We've got that uh, slightly articulated rear, rear wheel there. I imagine that is to help it to negotiate the, uh, the tighter curves found on the uh, model railways. And the centre wheel floats, I think, is the best way of uh, describing that. If I can just show that to the I can't get that in under the camera there. You can see it, it floats up and down. And I think that's a relatively good thing, especially going up onto the, the suspension bridge. It doesn't doesn't cause the uh, the tender to to rock like that, and uh, definitely improves power pickup to these uh, these two wheels here by not letting it rock. So again, quite a pretty thing. Not quite as detailed perhaps as it could be to go with the, the rest of the model. And we're still carrying plenty of speed there as she comes back down the incline section. That's in the HST. We're going to back right off the power now as we come under the elevated section. And we're going to prepare to come through points number eight. And we'll just switch those nice and gently through. Don't want any derailments. And then we'll switch up the points behind them. That's a bit quieter now we've taken that off. So if we have a, a swift look at that, you can see all the gearing there and the, the cable that runs down to the pin that goes into the, the drawbar there. Let's see if we can get focus on that. So it's important to keep that clean. We've got to, some oil on there, but you, you do have to put some on occasionally. We'll just have a swift look around this side. And then we've got the, the bearing on the other side there. It seems to be just plastics. Sorry, just just the plastic. There's no metal bearing on it. So just the uh, the uh, the shaft from the uh, the armature just coming straight through the plastic, and that can can tend to sort of squeal. So that's got some lubricant on it there, and you can see the commutator just in in the background, just just through the holes there. So you can get access to clean that without dismantling it. It, uh, too much. Let me just pop this down so I can have a look at this uh, service sheet here. So let me just have a look at that. So the motor's assembled in this very heavy metal metal unit here. And the uh, armature just goes in there and then the front plate with the springs that hold the, the brushes in plate. We've got the, the two traction tyres. You can see this just clips into this plastic sort of underframe or chassis for the tender, and unlike that class 25 we had a look at the other week, it uh, it sits firm in there. There is absolutely no play whatsoever, so there's no chance of this uh, this sort of lion to one side mounted on the on the block there. And I believe this uh, last wheel here that's articulated, I think that's mounted directly to the plastic uh, plastic chassis, and the floating one here. Is just held in place by the, the metal block being dropped down into the plastic chassis and that just allows that to float if we just have a, a swift look back at the service sheet there you can see that sort of the uh, the center axle there would just go into that block there and that allows it to sort of float up and down i think that's quite an important there that's probably a better way to view it there i think that's probably quite important especially to those of us who have a uh, 
inclines and where it doesn't quite level out as smoothly as it could due to not having enough space. So if we just have a, a swift look at the tender shell. So we've had a good look around that before. Let's have a swift look on the inside. And if, I, if we can get that so it reads down there, we can see that it does have a, a tender, the tender catalog number just in there. And it's a R351. I don't know whether we can just see that there. And it's a fairly clean and tidy in there. And again, there's that uh, slight melt mark there. As I said before, I'm not sure whether that's the interaction of the material used on the cabling, where it sort of melts the plastic, the two don't quite get along to each other. And there's a little bit of damage there, I suppose, where somebody's had the screwdriver between the two parts to try and separate them. We'll just have another look there, so that it is just clipped on at either end there, just into these uh, little recesses in here. I don't know whether we can see those there and there. So it just uh, it is just a, a clip fit type of thing. So you do need to push a screwdriver, the blade of a, a screwdriver in there to separate it, but it is rather a heavy thing, which gives it that uh, quite good pulling power. I'm expecting better, better performance with new traction tires. I think we'll just uh, follow a, a round the layout for a moment or two and just watch her. She is a, a terrific looking model. No, in retrospect, it seems odd that uh, Trying Railways, Trying Hornby or Hornby Railways stroke Rovex never really produced a model of the A4. But uh, Hornby Doubler seemed to have managed it quite early on. Or maybe it was the uh, the tire with Wren or Trying Wren in the late 60s, early 70s, which prevented a model being developed. But uh, whatever the reason, I think with the advances of technology in the 70s, this model was definitely worth the wait and it's paved the way for many fine models afterwards, I think. It really is a, a beautiful thing. And it does just make you want to make it go quicker and quicker and brings that huge smile to the face, which I think is all part of this model. It's just such great fun. Terrific looking. I mean, it, it looks quick, even when it's standing still. So we're just going to dive back into the 1979 catalogue for a moment and have a, a swift look at the coaches I have on the layout today. And I've got three of these composites. R437 and they're in this beautiful carmine and cream livery. They're very, very bright, I think. And I have a single brake, R438. Now, these, as we see them on the layout today, they, they came along in 77, lasted till 79. In um, 1980, I believe they got a paint finish. Hornby Railways was uh, paint finishing lots of their models at that period. And I believe the composite went to R421 and the brake to R424. Um, although I think um, they lasted till 83. Um, in 82, they may well have got uh, white rim, plastic white rimmed wheels in, instead of these uh, silver seal type wheels. I'm not sure whether, whether that's a step forward or a step backwards or a, a cost saving uh, precaution by uh, Hornby at the time. So we'll just pop that down. And two of the coaches have their boxes and two of the composites don't. So I've got a brake and a composite here. They are seriously tatty. Uh, they've uh, almost disintegrated. I think these boxes they are falling, falling apart. We'll have a look at the uh, the brake first, and we'll just uh, open it up gently. There we go, and uh, we'll just ease out the coach. There's the the numbering on the end of the box. R four thirty eight. Be our coach brake third. And that's a that's a a label stuck on and I have noticed again there's another R number there, R429. So I suppose if we just jump back to the catalogue, what we're gonna find is uh, R429 belongs to one of these uh, GWR composites. So quite interesting. So maybe they printed up the, the boxes for these and then just put sticky labels on for other models. So we'll see if we can ease this out. Cellophane's definitely well away on this box. And so I bought all four together uh, back when we had our model railway shop. So I believe they all came from the, the same source. And when I did get them, the wheels really were uh, quite uh, quite dirty. You can hardly see the, the, the bright, shiny surface at all. So they're all nice and clean now. 
These underframes, I think, are shared on a variety of cultures produced at that time. So again, a very economic way of producing many different cultures. So I think the roofs are painted up on these and I think they may have been molded in this sort of cream plastic and painted up red with black. So we've got the, uh, the buffers just included in the, in the underframe detail and those plastic type couplings which do absorb a bit of impact when you uh, couple up rather too quickly, which could be an advantage. And we do have lots of detail on the inside, although rather difficult to see. We can see through the, the corridor side here, and the guard's door there. No bars on the windows though. And I'm not quite sure what that reads as there. It's very, very difficult to read when I'm looking at the back of the phone filming this. So I shall have to have a look perhaps with a magnifying glass later on. And we can see slightly better into there, into the seated area of the, of the compartments. So we'll just uh, pop that one down and we'll have a swift look at the composite. As I said, the boxes really have seen uh, better days. Let's see if we can ease open the box. Again, there's a paper label on here. We'll just see if we can ease that one open. There we go. And again, that's uh, got 429 on it. So that's not the model number for the the coach in here, so we'll ease this out and have a swift look over again that same fantastic bright colours. Again, we're looking from the corridor side in there. And we'll just have a look around the other side. We can see into the, the seating area there. Lovely seats. We've got a slight pattern in them by the looks of it. See some wear through on the paintwork there to the uh, the cream plastic underneath. And on the corners of the roof, the roof the roofs are just sprayed up in uh, in grey. Let's have a look at the, the roof on the brake. It's got different detailing, which I think is, is quite nice. There we go. And the, the lighting unit that we saw from the other week could have been fitted to these as well, of course. So that could have uh, given an added uh, element of play to the layout. Again, similar underframe detail we do have made in Great Britain there. So... Uh, Quite bright, lively things to go on the layout. I'm not sure how accurate the colour is to uh, coaches that may have been on the railways. Another slightly interesting point I've only just noticed this afternoon is these silver seal wheels here have um, round section axles, and um, these ones have the uh, square section axles, which uh, form we decided to use for some reason. But uh, they both run very, very smoothly. So I think we're just going to move this group of models back around the inside line, just beyond point 11, and we'll back them up into the station where we originally started from. Now the traction tyres haven't arrived, but I've become less concerned about that as, as I've used the model and the grip seems to have improved. So I think those tyres have, have bedded in a little, they've worn off the, the sort of the shiny surface that was on them. I'm just going to bring this to a gentle stop and have a, a lovely shot here as she comes between the. Baltic tank and the HST there, switch the points and then we'll roll back really nice and gently through the points into the station and a, a lovely shot down the side of the mallard here, really pretty looking model. Now I think that's probably it for this week, it's hugely appreciated that you watched. If you look back again next time we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.